they did not all heed the good news. And the, the good news here is translated in your mainstream Bible as gospel. They did not heed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? And here he's quoting Isaiah 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? So faith comes from hearing. And hearing by or concerning the word of Christ. Okay? When Paul quotes, for example, Isaiah 53 here, when he appeals to Isaiah 53, what Paul is saying, hey, you know what? The gospel that we are preaching can be found in Isaiah 53. So let's just take a trip into Isaiah chapter 53. So we read from verse 1. It says, Who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He has no stately form nor majesty that we would look at him, nor an appearance that we would take pleasure in him. Now, who is this we? The we here is Israel. So Isaiah, through the Spirit of the Lord, is speaking about someone who would come to Israel. That person in Israel's eyes had no stately form or majesty that they would uh, take notice of him, nor an appearance that Israel would take pleasure in him. He was despised and abandoned by men. And the men here, again, would be Israel because context Isaiah is writing to Israel, right? So he would be, this person would be despised and abandoned by Israel. He would be a man of great pain and familiar with sickness and like one from whom people hide their faces, again, uh, um, Israel would hide their faces from, from this, this person. He was despised. He would be despised by Israel. And Israel had no regard for him. However, it was our sicknesses that he himself bore. This person would be a healer of diseases, of the diseases of Israel. And our pains he carried, carried the pains of Israel. Yet Israel themselves assume that he had been afflicted, struck down by God, and humiliated. Now, listen, we, any discerning person by now would realize this is talking about Jesus Christ. This is talking about the Messiah. This is talking about the Son of the living God, right? And his ministry to Israel. On the cross, this verse particularly here, we talk about uh, we assume that he had been afflicted and struck down by God and humiliated. This was Jesus' uh, trial and crucifixion experience where the Jews uh, mocked him and said, well, if you are the son of God, come down from the cross because how can you be the son of God and you are being and you're being put through all of this humiliation and all of this affliction but actually as Isaiah says Isaiah says but he was actually pierced for Israel's offenses he was crushed for Israel's wrongdoings the punishment for Israel's well-being was laid upon him and by his wounds Israel would be healed verse 6 and all of us all of Israel like sheep have gone astray each of them had turned to his own way that's it's talking about Israel that's why Jesus came to the lost sheep the sheep that went astray of the house of Israel but the Lord has caused the wrongdoing of Israel to fall on him talking about the sacrificial atonement made the sin offering made by God for Israel so this is the gospel right this is the gospel being revealed in Isaiah and Isaiah was written some what 600 years before Christ as we may say he was oppressed and afflicted yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers so he did not open his mouth we're talking about Jesus at his crucifixion where all these charges were laid against him and he did not respond he did not open his mouth he did not defend himself by oppression and judgment he was taken away and as for his generation who considered that he was cut off from the land of the living for the wrongdoing of my people to whom the blow was due this is the gospel 
and it was it was being read by the priest in the temple it was being read by the rabbis in the synagogue every sabbath day to the people of israel and his grave was assigned with wicked men do you remember jesus uh, when he was crucified on his left and on his right were two wicked men yet he was with a rich man in his debt that was joseph of Ar arimathea yeah that was the rich man because he had done no violence nor was there any deceit in his mouth jesus says for which sin are you convicting me of which sin are you accusing me of but the lord desired to crush him causing him grief if he renders himself as a guilt offering a sin offering he will see his offspring he will prolong his days and the good pleasure of the lord will prosper in his hand as a result of the anguish of his soul do you remember jesus in the garden of gethsemane where he says that uh his soul was so heavy and so torn because of the sufferings that he had to go through for the atonement of, of israel as a result of the anguish of the, his soul he will see it and be satisfied i think in the book of hebrews it talks about jesus went through that ordeal by faith he looked forward to what his sin offering would accomplish by his knowledge the righteous one my servant notice now this person is being identified he is the righteous one